and I hate to ask for a how-to, but coming to this book with as a thinking person and receiving it, is there some way, some entry point into what the book is moving toward? Uh, some way uh, that I'm preparing myself for receiving it? Again. I'm not quite sure I'm understanding. Is there, what's the, where do, from where do I start? Being that I can only come to the book with notions, ideas, maybe questions, and absorb what's on the printed page. Is there a, some way that I should go about thinking about what you're talking about as I'm reading this? Well, I think you're right. You can only approach it with, with I can only approach it in my limitation. Mm -hmm. I've never confronted anything like this before. Right. Up until now, I've been educated by the education system itself. Mm -hmm. The educational system has educated me into the fact of education, right. thinking that if I accumulate knowledge, I'm being educated and I'm learning something and I'm smart and I'm going to succeed and make money and be happy forever and ever, right. <clears throat> which is the fallacy, of mm -hmm. course. So you're asking me to approach something. Mm -hmm. I can only approach it in the way in which I've been accustomed to approaching it. Now. As I read the book, I'm having all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of feelings about what it is that I'm reading. And can I be aware and alert to what I'm thinking, what's coming up as I'm reading the book? Because the book isn't giving me any answers. So I'm asking myself, is this guy crazy? What kind of book is this that he's written, which doesn't seem to make any sense to me? <clears throat> uh, there was a, a, he was a, no, he was called a dance teacher. His name was George Gurdjieff. And Gurdjieff wrote a book, I think it was like 500 page book. And you could read the first 100 pages and the, then it was sealed off. And you were allowed to return the book if you didn't want to read the rest of it and get your money back. <laughs> uh, and if you've read that book, I've forgotten the name of it, it goes on hundreds and hundreds of pages, and maybe even three volumes. And there's not anything in the book, occasionally there's something in the book, from what I've been told, that makes sense. I personally have not read it. Uh, but what, from what I understand, it is so, appears to be very convoluted. And I think what Gertrude was trying to say is, you're not going to get any any real insight or become illuminated from reading, but you need to knock your head against the wall till finally you're willing to just simply stop doing that. In fact, Gurdjieff had an exercise called stop. And if you belong to his particular school, you might be in the garden doing something or working in the, by the lake and all of a sudden he screams stop and everybody had to simply stop, not move, not breathe, just stop. <clears throat> but I think what he was attempting to do was what most really good meditations are about, is to get thoughts simply to stop. And did that happen when he said stop in the middle of people's activities? <clears throat> I, I don't know. I don't know. What, what I'm saying is real meditations, meditation is a continuous thing. Mm -hmm. Enlightenment isn't a place that one arrives at. I've now become enlightened mm -hmm. and I've arrived. No. Everyone wants to get there. Yes. <laughs> or they say they do. You yeah. take the train to the last stop in Brooklyn right. and you get off and there's the beach. It's so <clears throat> sure. And at the last stop you arrive at the beach. Right. Uh, Journey complete. Exactly. And then, then what? Let's assume that, that that's the case and you finally become enlightened. Right. Now what? Well, and what does it mean to become enlightened? <clears throat> Obviously, enlightenment means a continuous seeing into the illusion that we call reality. Is that, and hence the purpose of questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's the dissolving of the illusion. It's like when you're a kid and you go see a magician mm -hmm. and he saws the girl in half. Mm -hmm. And when you're five years old, you go, wow. You know, you believe it to be true. It's an illusion, right? The magician takes you backstage, shows you how it's done. Now, the next day when you go to see it again, you're watching the girl get sawed in half, but you're, you're on 
you're not buying it as a reality, you see the illusion, the reality of the illusion of the trick itself. And you may be fascinated by that illusion. Well, you see how it's done. You simply see how it's done. You don't believe in the illusion any longer. <clears throat> so can I believe, can I see the illusion <clears throat> continuously? That can only happen, it's not a doing, by the way. It's not something that you do. It happens when one questions and is aware of what one is thinking and feeling as, as they question then there is a possibility uh, to get an insight into the movement of thought and the, the danger of thought psychologically. We've made great strides in, in technology, in science, in the arts, <clears throat> but we're not discussing that. We're discussing man's psychological structure. I can be a great scientist, but psychologically I can be very, very immature. I come back from my, the laboratory and I have an argument with my wife and I'm angry and I'm upset. Mm -hmm. So psychologically... She wants you to take out the trash. Exactly. Yeah. She wants me to take <laughs> out the trash. Even though you're a scientist. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we're talking about the psychological structure of the human, human beings on the planet. And so, anything you tell me to do is not working. I have a problem, and now I'm going to do something to look for the solution to the problem. Well, that's an avoidance of the problem. And that's what we've been doing. We have a problem in the Middle East, so we need to do this in order to remedy the problem. We never understand the problem. Every time that there's some shooting, someone goes into a school and shoots it up, and and they say, well, the, the person who did that was very, very disturbed. But people aren't looking into the deeper problem. You're talking about a universal problem. Yes, the universal problem of, of man being caught up in the illusion, believing that it has validity to it, and functioning in that way. I don't see the danger of psychological thought. You know, I've been brought up on sex, mm -hmm. drugs, and rock and roll, with all due respect. Mm -hmm. I'm not casting aspersions on that, but I'm simply saying that's a fact. Mm -hmm. I, I was talking to someone earlier, and I said, if you watch television, look at the commercials. How many commercials do you see where people are smiling? 90% of your commercials, at least. Everybody's happy. And the subliminal message they're sending you is, if you're not smiling, you're not happy, there's something wrong. And so, so get I, the thing that will make you happy. Yeah, get the thing that will make me smile, make me happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm subliminally being seduced continuously in so many ways <clears throat> that it's almost impossible for me to come upon the truth. The truth is there. You know, it's just like the, the girl isn't really being sawed in half. The truth is there. <clears throat> but I'm seeing, I'm focused on the illusion. So this book is designed really not to give any answers, but to stimulate person into questioning and looking and realizing that thought itself is not going to help me. So if I can really come to that point where I see thought itself is not going to help me, then what? And that's the beginning now of a deeper insight. Yeah. Is it possible to articulate what that what is? It's beyond thought. <clears throat> Thought, obviously, is functions within limit, limitation. I learn so much, and I function as if that is the be-all and the end-all. Mm -hmm. And then I realize that mm -hmm. that was limited, and I come upon something that's larger. And so I realize no matter how much knowledge I, I accumulate, it's always going to be limited. So that is what's causing uh, conflict. That's what's causing anger. That's what's causing fear. When that stops, mm -hmm. something else is there. 
Now that something else is not limited. If it's limited, it belongs to thought. So that something else can't be limited and can't belong to thought. So what is the substance of that something else? And since thought is conflict and violence, that something else obviously can't be that. So that something else <clears throat> is what is functioning, because thought no longer is functioning. So whatever word we would use to describe it obviously is not the it's thing. It's again a description. Yeah, but fair enough. But we can, we can use words, <clears throat> as, as we said earlier, if thought is used and knows its proper place, fair enough. It's when thought thinks that it's someone, we call it ego, <clears throat> then <clears throat> then it just goes in circles and circles and circles. <clears throat>